Thank you for including me among these amazing, amazing writers. I am so happy to be here. Um, I'm going to read a scene from my um, story refund. What you need to know is that um, Clarissa and her family live in Tribeca, a few blocks from Ground Zero in a rent subsidized apartment. It's a few weeks after September 11th, and she's taking her son to a preschool that their family cannot afford at all. She took Sammy to his first day of school. She walked down the street past the tape flyers. The local day spa was offering free massages for firemen and policemen. A neighborhood restaurant offered a $25 prefix, macaroni and roast beef. Donations to Ladder 8 for missing firemen accepted. Dozens of Xerox faces of the missing clung to lampposts wrapped with tape. They stared into the street. Loving husband and father, our dear daughter, worked on the 87th floor, worked at windows on the world. Please call. The preschool was a block north of the wooden police barricades that separated regular life from the crumpled heap of buildings, the endless black smoke. Her stroller rattled past them and through the doors of the preschool. The school staff floated around, greeting everyone with an unnerving intimacy by their first names. Sammy darted into his classroom, and she stood with a cloud of mothers. They had walked to school under the smoky, foul skies, wearing leather coats in blue and orange. It seemed a paltry, mean decision, deciding what to wear, waking up and hearing the broken buildings falling into the boats. They had decided to dress up. Their hair was frosted golden and brown, and they were beautiful, and when they left, they cupped hands over their mouths. Have you gone out to dinner yet? She heard one mother ask another. You wouldn't believe the good deals down here. Plus, you can get reservations. Prefix at Chanterelle, 35 bucks. Incredible. Plus, you have money for a good bottle of wine. The Independence has a special, eat American, said another. The waitstaff is fast and gracious. They have the most exquisite apple pie. Clarissa closed her eyes and rubbed her face, wondering if she should admire these mothers' resilience or be appalled. We were refugees at the plaza, she heard another mother say. They had a special for everyone living below canal. We had to go. Our place was covered in dust. We started throwing up, and I knew we had to get out. It cost a ton to get it cleaned. Should we stay or go? Can someone just tell me? She whirled around, looking. The teacher came by. The children are doing well, she said. Do you want to say bye before you go? Now Clarissa swerved through the room. Your child was not in the world, and then he was suddenly part of it. She crouched and breathed his clean, heartbreaking smell. I'm going by, she said. Her child ignored her. Slowly, she stood up. In the office off the main hallway, the in-house psychologist was holding a drop-in support session in which parents could talk about their feelings about sending their children to preschool three blocks from the site. Clarissa stood with the group clustered around the psychologist. One mother said, my child screamed the whole way here, saying she was scared and didn't want to go, and I dropped her off, but then, well, I wonder, is she right to be scared? Why is she right? asked the psychologist. Well, because, called Clarissa from the back. You have to believe it is safe, said the psychologist. You tell them a kid's job is to go to school, and a parent's job is to keep you safe. But what if we don't know if it's safe, Clarissa asked. Where is it safe, the psychologist said. Here, Brooklyn, Vermont, Milwaukee? 
The parents lean toward her, awaiting an answer. You have to tell them a little lie, the psychologist said. Thank you.